Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Modified. We got a Monaro on a GQ chassis with another motor in it, five litre. Let's meet the owner and find out what's going on. Tappy. Ronnie, how Good are to you? meet you, mate. Good. Thanks for bringing this beast of a Monaro out here. Do you want to tell us the make, model, the year? It's a 1969 HT Monaro. It's sitting on a Nissan GQ Patrol chassis with the injected 304 VN5 litre in it. That's a fair bit of work, mate. It is a lot of work. It concept simple, but it was a lot of work to make it this simple. This episode of Modified is sponsored by the Terrain Tamer East Store. If you're building a four-wheel drive, maybe as cool as this one here right now, you should check them out because they may have the parts that you need. All right, let's get back into this episode because this is one wicked vehicle. Bar work, bash plates, side rails, rear bar, there's a lot going on. So the front bar is a grunt bar. Just a standard off the shelf to fit a GQ Patrol. As you can see at the back, the detail, we've just did a little bit of a fill in at the back, just to shape with the profile of the front end of the Monaro. What size winch you got in here for this size vehicle? 12,000 winch. 12, Probably more than enough for the vehicle, eh? It does its job. It does its yeah. job well. I'm sure when it's fully laden with all the fuels, should be close to around about the 2.9 to 3 ton. Right. When it's fully loaded, rooftop mm. tent, bars on it, and she's ready to go to Cape York again or go across the country. Big weights in it, dual GQ patrol fuel tanks. So how much fuel have you got on board? The dual tanks are off the Touring model GQ. So you're looking around about 160 litres. And what's your range on that? Oh, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> it goes from standard around about 15 to 16 litres per 100, up to with the rooftop tent or the parachute as I like to call it. It's about 30, 32 litres per 100. Off-road, it's actually better than on-road on the highway. It's not built for highway crew. It's built for off-road. Tell us about your side steps. Side rails, again, all grunt. Everything come from grunt bars down there in Melbourne. They're the standard rocks, rock sliders. Mm. Uh, bolted straight onto the chassis, so. Oh, hence the GQ sh chassis. So anything that fits the GQ chassis, that's what's going on. Basically, yeah. again, you've got to look at building something like this. It's all about complying with engineering sure. from state to state, obviously. We try to make it as theoretically as simple as possible. And I wanted to make it look like an original Overlander built in the 60s. Let's go around the back and check out the rear bar. Sure. This is also from a G, or for a GQ. That's correct. I can imagine there'd be a lot of work involved in getting this to fit a Monaro because the GQ's kind of got a flat back and this kind of tapers under. Yeah, it has been modified to suit the profile of the rear of the Monaro shell. Extensively, 10 plate re-welded and bolted back onto the original mounts. You have an option to either do two wheels, I selected for one wheel and also the carrier, purely as you can gather with the V8 in it. It likes a bit of fuel, so that's there. But if it's only a short trip, short weekend away, it backs up for an extra 20 litres of water as well. I like how this bar kind of complements the lines you have in a vehicle. Was this planned or did it just work out that way? It was started to work out that way. Then when we figured it missed a little bit, we redesigned the plan to make sure it did suit. Those flares on the side, that is definitely not factory. So did you get these custom made or what are they? They're not, no. They're off a Holden Radeo RA model, the Ute. No way. And they fit? They fit well. Wow. So you didn't have to alter it much at all? We had a fair bit of altering with the body because you've got to understand that the body's made to suit the chassis mounts. We had to cut out a bit of the wheel arches mm -hmm. just to make sure that that will fit the 33s under it as well. The whole idea is to make this look like it was factory thought of. So as you know, it's not a wagon, it's not a ute, there's no canopy. So how do we camp out of a Monaro? Probably pretty obvious, it's in the boot. I feel like we're doing a dodgy deal in the bush here. We are. That's pretty well packed in, mate. That's a handy height. You got a little prep table here, I'll take it. It's a good height. It's a great height. I'm surprised how much space you actually have in the boot of this thing. I had to redesign it and it is pretty squashed, but it works. It's, the floor was modified from the original Monaro and normally had a hump where the old fuel tank was and the spare wheel goes. Fridge is on a slide out, so if I unpack all this, that'll come closer. The bigger fridge would have hit the boot. Where's your water storage? Water storage is normally behind you on the, on the carrier, or like the swag, you'll have to go in the back seat. Right. Unless I go for an extended trip and I'll put the IROC bars on the top and I'll put a rooftop tent on. 
Right, so you rooftop tent on top of this. Yes, Rhonda Delta, it's Tappy. G'day, Tappy. Tell us about your lights and comms, mate. At the moment, I'm talking on a little GME. Uh, and I've also got a secondary GME. I always run two. And my lights are a King's 7-inch at the front, Spotties, and a King's 22-inch light bar also. Two Spotties, one light bar. Is that enough light? for when you're driving in the dark. And do you drive in the dark often, over? Yeah, they're plenty of light, they're really good. I do do a little bit of night driving, and as you can understand, the 1969 HT Monaro lights, they're like old candles. In dark as we find camp, how often does that happen to you, mate? Hopefully not too often, depending on the track and how much, let's say, bad luck we have getting to the destination. And that's the end of Copy that. Tappy out. Lots and Comps. It's time for Under the Bonnet, and Tappy's going to take it away. As you can see, it's a standard 304 VN injected 5 litre, married up to a Marks adapter system. It has twin batteries, twin thermos, pretty much just standard. There's not much to do with it. Purely fact is, I don't want to have a highly modified car breaking down in the middle of nowhere, so I can get all the parts from any major town that I need to and straight off the shelf. All Mark's adapters, total fitment kit, so engine mounts were included as well as your bell housing to go to the gearbox. It's setting quite well, obviously with the Monaro engine bay, you've got plenty of room to sit it in. A few little details, this is a VL Commodore air filter system, purely because the other ones did not fit on. I've also had to cut down the water bottle for the windscreen, it was the original Holden one, we've cut that down to fit underneath the hinges because I also house all the electronics for the front winch on there. It's a dual battery setup, you've got the crank battery this side, the auxiliary that side, and that's all hooked up to the winch, and it also has a main line that goes back through to the boot to do the fridge and any accessories I wish to hook up at any part of the time from that. Tires and wheels. Mate, they're standard Nissan GQ Patrol rims. Obviously manual hub locks. They've got 33 inch on 15 inch rims. Seeing 33s on a Monaro, mud tyres. <laughs> it's a lot different. It turns a lot of heads when it goes down the road. A lot of people mistake of being on a car trailer until I actually sit beside them and they look over. That's funny. It's, it's pretty funny. Coopers, mud trains, bench and wires. She's running a two inch lift, two inch springs with three inch shocks. Commandos. So, Commandos? Little unknown brand. And you said two inch lift? Two inch lift, two inch springs. three-inch shocks, obviously travelling downwards. The whole drive line, that's just from a GQ and there's nothing different there? It's all standard, basically. It's a GQ, automatic, electronic, four-speed, okay. the overdrive, original LSD rear end diffs, no lockers in it yet. I don't think at this stage I need them. With the chassis, did it have to be extended or shortened or anything to, to fit the body of this vehicle? So the chassis is standard. The shell could be taken off and put a wagon shell straight back on. Everything that had to be modified came from the shell. Okay. So the shell suits the chassis mounts. Everyone knows about the GQ wobbles. So we had to fix that one on, on the front end. But other than that, it flexes and works well. It's built for what I need it to do. It goes everywhere you need to be whether it be Cape York, local in the Wadikins here on the central coast, or again, a bit of desert traveling a bit later. You think of driving a Nissan Patrol GQ. Mm. Everything is basically like that. The difference Except for your center of gravity is a lot lower. Center of gravity is unreal. Yeah, I'll bet it is. It does 
it does get a little bit heavy when you get the rooftop tent when I'm extended traveling sure. like for Cape York, obviously. But other than that, it is very funny to see people's faces when I roll around a corner and they just look twice and I basically tackle everything they do. It's fun. So getting into the vehicle was a little bit awkward because you've got to go up high and then you've got to go down low. But once you're in here, it is spacious. It's huge. It is. It's, it's classy. It's got volumes of room, good leg room to stretch out. Although I would not like to be a backseat passenger. It's like a lounge chair on the back to sit in. It's just the hard getting in and out of the back. But once you're in the back, it's, you can sleep. It's like a beautiful lounge chair. Recline, lazy boy. Oh, it's marvelous. <laughs> All old school, the smell of vinyl. What else do you need? It just smells, feels like a Monaro in here. And that's what I want it to be. The original radios, retro radios, AM, FM, it works. That's cool. I like I, how you kept it sort of original as well. I tried to as much as possible. Obviously, cigarette lighter's got another 12 volt socket on the front dash just in case. I usually run a VMS uh, if I have to, GPS. Lights, I've got two tanks over on the side, plus I've got the winch hooked up internal. So if I'm solo traveling, I can control the winch nice. straight from the dash. Do you have the hand to override it just in case? I do. In the glove box there's one, there's also the wireless one as well. Tell us why you chose this vehicle to go on a GQ chassis. I wanted to be something different. And it's different, all right? I love the fact that people do have two takes at it when I drive past it. The first question they always ask is why? So my standard answer now is because I could. And the GQ chassis was, I believe for my purposes, probably the best for off-roading in. I love it, I really do. When people say to me, can't do it, I say, why not, let's give it a go. Why not a 4.2 litre, and you went the five litre Commodore engine instead? Because you, you could have got the GQ engine, right? So I went with the whole system of, if this came, the chassis came with the 4.2 or 4.2 turbo diesel, I would never have put a V8 in it to start with. I would have kept it for the diesel and for off-roading. I built this to be off-road, not a show pony. Sure. Which is a big thing. A lot of people look at me and go, oh, does it ever go off-road? Well, as people, particularly people around me know, friends know, I use it and I'm not afraid to. I've been down to Adelaide, Melbourne, Cape York's a big one, always in the Waddick in the backyard, Dungog, whether it be Barrington's. So it's, it's always being used. Every weekend I like to get in there and use it. The shows become a bonus. Mm. And that's on the weekends I'm not out camping and enjoying the outdoors. I think for this vehicle, this, just the sound of the V8, it, it says it's a Monaro. Sounds good. As I keep telling people, it feels, smells, sounds like Monaro it will drive like a dirty old GQ patrol. <laughs> What's the longest stint you can do in this vehicle for say, remote camping, so there's no supplies around. I understand that if you're traveling constantly, you're gonna to need to fill up like any vehicle. The fuel normally dictates how often I stop, but to be solo camping in the middle of nowhere, I'll be comfortable for doing a week and a half, two weeks, say nine to 14 days. With such a highly modified vehicle, the electrics were changed. You get a little bit skeptic. Again, the plan down the road, I'd love it to become solar. Have it been, hopefully, I could go do the big red, the desert run. I'd love to go to WA in it. So I'd love it to be at least nearly a month off road with a couple of little tweaks that I still have to do. You don't buy a four wheel drive A to be fuel efficient. No. And B, you or don't, a Monaro. You don't drive a, you don't drive a Monaro. Well, you don't buy a Monaro thinking that's it. You got nothing else to do. It's a 1969 car. Yeah. You're gonna have its gremlins, sure. which everyone knows of. Marrying these two up, 
what was the most difficult part? Was it the legality or was it actually doing it? Apart from crying, you're cutting up a shell of a Monaro. <laughs> that's probably the biggest thing a lot of people will always tell me. But you've got to understand, the shell was virtually a near wreck anyway. I did not want to change the chassis mounts because engineering, obviously. So cutting the shell a couple of four or five inches out of the front panels, front and rear panels, the front and rear of the wheel arches, they had to be cut. Obviously then you had to understand that you had to pre-plan what size wheels you're gonna to go to, what size suspension do you wanna to go to, where do you wanna take the vehicle? It's, I think I've got a pretty good balance. I think, yes, I'd love to be a great big touring vehicle and go around Australia, love it, aiming for that now, but I think this could give a few decently modified trucks a bit of a run. Going to Cape York and seeing the faces of the families on the side when they've realised the Monaro's come on the telly track. <laughs> it was like a snapshot. If I could video film their faces, I think that was gold. Reacting to Monaro crossing I the should. Track. I should look at doing <laughs> that. I, I think, and again, even going down the road, you go on the highway, people have two or yeah. three takes thinking, yeah. I'm on a car trailer. Tell you what, like the five of us were waiting at the servo <laughs> and I refrained from pulling my phone out because everyone else pulled their phones out. So then you come around the corner, everyone's like... But I must say that I don't need to take photos of my own car. I just get people to do it for me and tag me into it. It's, it's weird and wacky on some of the sites. Oh my God, what's that? What have they done? Just to go to the local shopping centre. That's an hour. Just to talk to people in the car park. I pull up. There's 20 minutes, I go in and there's a crowd ready to another 20 half hour. I'm chuffed at how many people do like it and what I've done. And for those that don't, so I get it, it's not everyone's cup of tea. People don't realise why I do it to start with. And the shell, it was, it was gone. It had been T-boned both rear quarters. The front K-frame had been basically damaged, ripped, bent. In my words, in my thoughts, I've saved the car. I've made this have a brand new lease of life for today's world. I reckon it's awesome, man. I reckon, I reckon you've done a great job and thank you very much for, for taking us out here and thank showing you. us the car and thanks mate, for being part of the channel, mate. I appreciate it and I appreciate everything and what you're doing for the four-wheel driving community. Everything's been done right and it's been done respectfully. I, I want to thank you and, and all your team, really. In my words, you're a legend of the community. Much appreciated, mate. Thanks again, Tappy. And also, thanks to Terrain Tamer Eastor for sponsoring the show Modified. And we'll see you guys next week.